Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to start getting into externalities, specifically negative externalities. Um, to use uh, an example, we're going to look at fossil fuels, fossil fuels including petroleum, coal, natural gas. We can see here that as of 2018, unfortunately, the main primary energy sources for uh, the global economy is petroleum, 34%, coal, 27%, and natural gas, 24%, um, thus amounting to 85% of the share of fossil fuels used and consumed worldwide, all right, which is unfortunate. And hopefully within the next couple of decades, we'll see a transition away from fossil fuels to more cleaner, sustainable energy sources. Um, looking at the, the primary energy use uh, worldwide, again, we can see in this pie that oil composes 32%, coal 27%, natural gas. Significant amount of energy generated worldwide by fossil fuels. And then we get to biofuels, nuclear energy, hydro, and renewables, which unfortunately, unfortunately just makes about Two, just under 2%. And again, hopefully that will increase over time. We're going to use the example of a coal-fired power station. All right, So this is going to look at the production of electricity generated through the burning of coal. That will be our applied example. So here we have our graph. And on our graph, we can see we're looking at the market for electricity produced and consumed, and that electricity being generated by coal fired power stations. Now we're going to use our simple supply and demand graphs as we've been doing in micro. This is very familiar to us. We have our upward sloping supply curve labeled S1, which we know is equal to our marginal cost. And we're going to have our downward sloping demand curve according to law of demand labeled D1 equal to our marginal benefit. And then we have our equilibrium in the free market of PE and QE. What we're going to do with externalities is that we're going to just be a little bit more specific. So instead of just saying marginal cost, we're going to say marginal private cost. And I'm going to talk about private goods in just a moment. And instead of saying just marginal benefit, we're going to talk about marginal private benefit. And in addition, instead of labeling our equilibrium as PE and QE, I'm going to label it instead as PM, price in the free market, M representing the free market equilibrium, and quantity M representing the equilibrium quantity in the free market. So when we were looking at the free market in micro, as we've been doing for the past couple of chapters, um, we have really been looking at the exchange of private goods, the free, free market, and looking at the exchange of private goods. And private goods have two qualities. One, they're excludable. Right? It is your private property, thus you exclude other people from using it. And two, we will assume that it has the quality of being rivalrous, meaning that as you use it, its quality um, is diminished over time. All right, it becomes more and more of a used good over time. Um, and so private goods have that characteristic. All right, this computer, for example, is uh, 10 years old. Um, so it has the quality of being rivalrous. Um, it's being diminished over time in terms of its quality, perhaps because of its processing speed, its graphics, etc. And it's also excludable because I purchased it. It's my private property and I exclude other people from using it. So we can understand how the demand curve represents our marginal private benefit, that as a consumer or as a household, when you consume goods, they become your private good, your private property, and as you use it, it's diminished over time. What about on the supply side? Well, supply suppliers also have their private goods. All right, when we look at the suppliers, all right, if we look at the supply side, we know that suppliers or producers, they employ 
resources. They employ inputs, which is another word for resources, which is another word for factors of production. And factors of production include land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. So in order to generate electricity, the coal-fired power plant must purchase, let's say, for example, coal. And when that coal is purchased, it becomes the private property of the coal-fired power station. And in addition, they might employ other resources like labor. Now, they will employ labor. They will not own it, but that labor will be exclusive to the coal-fired power station because that employee is working only for this company for a period of time. Okay, so we can take that into consideration that the supply curve represents the marginal private costs, the private inputs owned and employed by the firm, which compose their costs of production. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So we know where S1 equals D1, or where the marginal private cost equals the marginal private benefit, it establishes a equilibrium price at PM, or price in the free market, and an equilibrium quantity at QM, where the quantity supply equals the quantity demanded. That's pretty much what we've been doing so far in microeconomics. We already know this. Well, there's an additional cost that is not being illustrated, and that's what we want to take into account when we discuss externalities. So since this coal-fired power plant is burning coal, right? It's burning coal and emitting carbon into the atmosphere. We can take into account its impacts. So carbon emissions, when we look at that, carbon being emitted into the atmosphere is uh, an input leading to climate change. And we're starting to see the impacts of climate change worldwide on the environment, um, on, on certain businesses, production disruptions in uh, the economy as a result of adverse weather conditions, forest fires in Australia, um, freak snowstorm in Texas. Scientists will confirm whether or not that's a result of climate change. Um, but these unusual weather patterns and how it, it disrupts the economy. In addition, we should take into account um, the impact on human health. So when we look at local air pollution, as the coal-fired power plant burns the carbon and releases sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide into the atmosphere, it can da damage human health. It can uh, perhaps create uh, lung problems, lung disease, perhaps lung cancer, uh, and other ailments. Okay. Well, where is that illustrated? Well, it's not illustrated, right? And firms have gotten away with externalizing that cost to society, right? So that's an important concept. Um, when firms externalize a cost onto society, that's what we call an externality. And thus, the free market price, the price of PM, doesn't really reflect the true costs of production. The true cost of production should include, yes, the private costs, but it should also include the social costs. So, you know, the idea of establishing what is the real cost of production, the true cost of production should be equal to the both the private costs and the social costs, All right? And the social cost being the negative impact or the cost of a carbon, a ton, one ton of carbon into the atmosphere. How much damage does that cause um, into the economy, on the environment, on human health? If we can quantify that, then we can establish an additional curve, which is this. All right, so that would be an illustration of these external costs. So S2 is equal to our marginal social cost, the cost to society of the damage done in terms of human health, the environment, and uh, economic or political impacts of climate change, etc. So there's definitely additional costs occurring. So economists want to quantify what are those costs and try to devise a system in which we can um, force firms to pay for those costs and also force the household to pay for those costs. So we're getting the true costs uh, and the price, 
within the market system. Okay, so we're going to highlight another point here, and that would be this distance at QM, at the free market quantity, the distance between these two points. All right, and we can see here at QM that the marginal social costs of production are going to be greater than the marginal social benefit. And so our demand curve is not only equal to our marginal private benefits, also equal to our marginal social benefit. These are equal because the household is not generating any external problem uh, when they consume electricity. There's no damage being done by the household when they consume electricity. The damage is being done on the production side with the coal being burnt in the coal-fired power plant, being emitted into the atmosphere. That, where, that is where the damage is occurring. Um, so we see marginal social cost is greater than the marginal social benefit. So at QM, the marginal social cost is greater than the marginal social benefit, which means that there is an over allocation of resources to the production and consumption of electricity, electricity generated by coal. So that is a welfare loss. This triangular area represents that loss to society. So where do we want to be? Ideally, the socially optimum quantity and price would be at this point, where MSC equals MSB, right? Where MSC Right, where MSC equals MSB. That would be allocatively efficient. And that would provide an optimal price where P optimum, again, we want to remember the optimal price or the true price or the true cost production would be the private costs, the marginal private cost plus the marginal social costs. And it would also provide us the optimal quantity. What does society really want? We want less coal-fired power stations generating electricity and polluting the atmosphere. So that creates this new equilibrium. So where MSC equals MSB, we see the optimal price being generated and the optimal quantity being generated. So we would label this the optimal price, again, where the optimal price is the marginal private cost plus the marginal social costs, and we get the optimal quantity. Remember, in the free market, there's an overallocation, which means that society wants less. And if we can get MSC to equal MSB at this point, we're at quantity optimum, and we've achieved that. Okay? So that is how we would illustrate and negative externality of production. Right? This is an introduction of negative externality of production. On the production side, there is too much versus what society would like. So to help us with our analysis, I'm going to illustrate, uh, I'm going to label a few points. We can maybe label that point A, and this is point A. B, and this is point C, okay? So let's go ahead and analyze. As can be seen, we have a graph, graph A, uh, illustrating the market for electricity generated by coal-fired power, uh, by a coal-fired power station. We're measuring the price of electricity on the y-axis and the quantity of electricity being generated on the x-axis. We have two upward sloping supply curves and according to law of supply, S1 is equal to our marginal private costs of production, and S2 is equal to our marginal social costs of production. We have a downward sloping demand curve, labeled D1, which is equal to our marginal private benefit, which is also equal to our marginal social benefit, because the household, um, there's no externality being generated by the household when they consume the electricity. That is the assumption. So where S1 equals D1, Perhaps we can make notes of this as we um, analyze it. So where S1 equals D1, we see that the marginal private costs of production is equal to the marginal private benefit 
which generates a free market equilibrium price at PM and a free market equilibrium quantity at QM, where the quantity supply equals the quantity demanded. And then we notice that at QM, the marginal social cost, right, which is point B, is greater than the marginal social benefit, which is at point A. This welfare loss represents the external cost of emitting uh, coal or carbon into the atmosphere and its negative impact on our atmosphere, which is a common access resource, on human health, the environment, hum um, other species, etc. So society would like less of this electricity be generated by coal. Thus, we see the socially optimum uh, being represented by the supply curve S2, which is equal to our marginal social cost. Um, and we have that intersecting with our marginal social benefit at point C. At point C, that provides the optimal price, P optimum, which is equal to our marginal private cost of production plus our marginal social cost of production. And the result of the, the, the higher price, there'll be a decrease in the quantity demanded from point A to C or from QM to QOPT, reaching the allocatively efficient uh, amount of output production consumption that's desired by society, right? So we're going to look in future videos of how do we achieve that? How do we achieve allocative efficiency? How can the government intervene to solve this market failure? So we'll look at the imposition of different solutions like carbon taxes, cap and trade schemes, government regulation, etc. And that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, comment and don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.